in the last lecture we discussed about the importance of what we call as the shape factor which is actually a geometric property of any given section. So, for any given section the shape factor is available in the standard tables. So, if you know the shape factor you can easily find what would be the additional load carrying capacity of any system we are talking about the plastic moment of resistance of the section because you can multiply the elastic moment of resistance which is nothing but sigma y into z y or z d or simply z with the section modulus which we already know for a given section. <coughs> Whereas, m p is again given by sigma y of z p where z p we already know is given by conventionally area by 2 of y bar 1 plus y bar 2 where y, y bar 1 and y bar 2 are the centroids of the respective tensile and compressive area with respect to the equal area axis when a is a total area of cross section which is getting plasticized. So, we have worked out couple of examples to estimate the shape factor. So, I think it is a homework for you to find out what all the shape factors for different sections like for example, a box section which is square in shape what would be the shape factor for this then an I section then of course, a channel section etcetera I mean you should find out the shape factors for these. Of course, this x is not very necessary because for different standard conventional geometric forms of steel sections which are likely to be used in marine structures we already have the equations available in the literature for finding out the shape factor I will give you these equations later this is available in <coughs> ABS American Bureau of Shipping Code it is available in the ABS code for different shapes. So, it is not necessary that you have to memorize this, but you must know how to estimate them. Now, we spoke about a very important transformation from an elastic analysis to a plastic analysis where the designers felt that the reserve strength of the material can be utilized provided the structure should remain statically indeterminate by a very high order whereas, redistribution can effectively take place and the material should have enough ductility. The moment we say ductility there are two aspects of ductility here one is the displacement ductility whether the deformation can sustain other is what we call curvature ductility because in certain cases <coughs> for example, let us say I have a beam column junction this is a typical beam column junction. it may be a stiffened seated connection it may be an ISMB it can also be an ISMB it can be a stiffened seated connection it can be a moment restrained connection between the beam and the column if it is a steel structure if it is concrete of course this is also reinforced is also reinforced. Now, the structure become vertically indeterminate for example, let us say I have a system like this. whereas all the vertical lines indicate columns and on all the horizontal lines indicate beams a typical junction which is a beam column intersection looks like this. If this structural system is subjected to lateral loading and gravity loading the system becoming very highly indeterminate. <coughs> if you want to enable plastic analysis to find out the m p value for this system there are two things which are inherently required one is the system should be statically indeterminate to a very high degree it is true in this case. 
the second requirement is though the material is steel, we must check whether at the junction there is enough curvature ductility. Otherwise, if the curvature ductility is not sufficient, then effective redistribution of moments from the section to the next critical section will not happen. Because when the structure is subjected to a collapse mechanism, the joints where the plastic hinges will be formed should be sufficiently rotating to transfer the moments from the section to adjacent section. So, it requires enough curvature ductility. So, one must check what is the relationship to derive the curvature ductility or essentially moment curvature relationship, what we call M phi relationship. We must check this, which we will do today. We already know from classical mechanics for simple bending problem. The following equation holds good. m by i stress by y e by r, where we all know the conventional terms of this m is the moment at the section, i is the moment inertia, moment of inertia of the cross section about the bending axis, stress sigma is the stress value, bending stress and y is the distance of the extreme fiber from the neutral axis, e is the Young's modulus of the section or modulus of elasticity of the material and r is the radius of curvature of the bending profile of the beam. Okay, it is a classical equation which is valid when the bending remains elastic. So, let us pick up this equation and say 1 by r is m by e i. Okay, which I call as 1 by r is called curvature. So, from this equation it appears that phi and m are directly proportional that is if m increases phi also increases. Okay. This is true only till elastic limit is reached. Let us have a rectangular cross section just for illustrating an example has a breadth of B as a depth of H. This is my equal area axis as well as neutral axis for this P. And the distance of the extreme fiber is h by 2 from here, which I call as y. So, let us say E by R is stress by Y so the distance of the extreme fiber in my present case is H by 2. So, E by R is stress 
by h by 2 where stress remains the yield value because the extreme fiber is yielding only the extreme fiber is yielding only the extreme fiber is yielding okay only the extreme fiber is yielding Uh, we have given a special name for an elastoplastic section. We call this as depth of elastic core. Okay. Let E denotes depth of elastic core in a elastoplastic section. I am talking about. partially plasticized section okay the section is partially pla plasticized and when this will happen this will happen when m increases further after stress reaches the first yield is it not after the stretch value reaches the first yield, plasticization will start. Okay. So, the stress strain diagram will start getting modified like this as we saw and this becomes my what I call depth of elastic core, is it not? This is what we have seen instead. So, at that condition my 1 by r value can now become 2 sigma y by E e. I call C equation number 1. Okay. I am replacing h with depth of elastic core because I am looking at the elastoplastic section now. Why I am looking at this because I am studying the moment curvature ductility effect when the section is getting plasticized. In elastic there is no problem curvature is there right. In plastic we must check this. So, we can now say 1 by r which is phi which is m by e i I can use a suffix here I say 1 by r at yield will be at yield I can replace this phi as phi y. Therefore, phi y can be simply m by e i, it means phi and m are proportional. Similarly, you can say phi p is also equal to m p by e i and m p by m y is phi p by phi y and we already know this m p by m y is nothing but shift factor. Where yes this is the shift factor. Let us expand the left hand side of this equation. We know this is going to be equal to sigma y of z p by sigma y of z y which is phi p by phi y which is yes.
also we already saw moment at any section can be traced with the depth of the elastic core in a given elastoplastic section by a classical expression which we saw yesterday. This expression we have already derived yesterday. Okay. So, let us say m by m p 1 minus e square by 3 a square I call c equation number 2. Look back equation number 1, 1 by r 2 sigma y by e e this is equation number 1 already we have this. So, from this e will be actually equal to r 2 sigma y by e substitute this in equation 2 because e is here ok e is here. So, m by m p so 1 minus 2 r sigma y by e the whole square 1 by 3 h square. We can simplify this further 1 minus 1 by 3 of 2 sigma y by e of one by h by r square is it okay we already know we know that 1 by r from here 2 sigma y by e h. So, 2 sigma y by e can be replaced as h by r. So, rewriting m by m p 1 minus 1 by 3 of h v r square 1 by h v r square. Now, there is a difference between this value of h by r and this value of h by r. What is the difference? What is the difference between this value of h by r and this? This is at yield. So, I can say here yield, is it not? This is at yield. The distance at the extreme favor was h by 2, and I got sigma y here. So, it is at yield, is it not? First yield point. So, this value is occurring. First yield. Therefore, I can say this is h by r of yield value substituted here. I can rewrite this equation as is that okay? equation number 4 this was 3 this was 3 
it was 4. Now, equations 2 and 4 are very important for us. Equation 2 gives me the relationship between the moments, the plastic moment and the moment at any section with respect to the elastic coat. Equation 4 gives me the relationship of the moments that is the moment at any section with the plastic moment capacity with respect to the curvature ductility. Okay, this can be plotted. Now, just to understand physically what does it mean for the designer is that let us take equation 2 in design perspective. In design perspective, let us take equation 2 that is m by m p is 1 minus E square by 3 H square. Now, what you know in this equation are the following. What you know in this equation are the following. Moment at any cross section is known to me. Be it determinate, be it indeterminate. If the structure is indeterminate, there are methods to find out moment at any section using classical structural mechanics principles. For example, moment distribution method, for example, stiffness method. There are many methods available, one can easily find out moment at any section you want for a given loading. M p is known to me, M p is not a problem because M p is nothing but z p into sigma y and z p is nothing but section modulus into shape factor into sigma y and for a given section, I know the section modulus and I know the shape factor. So, m p is also known to me. It means the left hand side variation is known to me for a given selected section. So, for the chosen section, m by m p is known to me, is it not? For the chosen section, design is nothing but finding the section. You choose a section, know this relationship, and from this relationship, try to find out E. If E matches H depth of the section, it means section is fully plasticized. So, the, the design what you have done is optimum. The design what you have done is optimum, is it not? Okay. So, one can optimize a section. for least elastic core, least elastic core, elastic core should be minimized, is it not? Plastic should be the maximum. So, that is the design perspective of this. Having said this, it is a very interesting question asked whether the plastic design or ultimate load design okay, is safe. It means whether does it have enough margin of safety. I asked this question in the beginning. Why this question is a concern? This question is a concern because in ultimate load design or in ULS ultimate limit state design principles, we are utilizing the reserve strength of the material till the ultimate strength of the material. So, any increase in the load will have a tendency to cause failure to the structure because the material will fail beyond that point. In working stress design or a classical 
working stress design principles this problem does not occur because you do not stretch the strength of the value of the material beyond the elastic limit whereas here I am trying to stretch the load carrying capacity beyond the elastic limit till the ultimate limit. Okay. So, there is a question asked does it have enough margin of safety. Okay. Now, as I said let us introduce a factor q which is called as a load factor. which is nothing but the ratio of collapse load to working load. So, in the plastic design The yield strength is assumed to remain constant the allowable stresses are taken only as a fraction of the yield stress, but more interestingly this fraction is close to 1.0 0 0.95 0 0.97 0 0.90 it is very close, but it is never 1 it is close to 1 of course, it does not exceed 1. Okay. So, we know now that q is w c by w w and we also agree that moment carrying capacity is always proportional to w that is the load is it not. Therefore, m w can be some constant of w w, m p can be some constant of w p, okay, some constant. So, m p by m w which is w p by w w w which is nothing but q. Why I am saying W p is as same as W c because beyond that value the structure will collapse. Okay. P stands for plastic design. Okay. So, it is I can always say this is same as collapse load. So, once we agree this let us expand the left hand side of this equation. let us say m p by m w, m w stands for working moment based on working loads okay, which is z p into sigma y and z e into sigma y allowable okay. it is not sigma y sigma allowable. And sigma allowable is always a fraction of sigma y. We already said that here. Okay, this fraction is close to one, but it is a fraction. Now let us say m p by m w is z p by z e and z y by z allowable. And I can rewrite this as shape factor in z y by z allowable.
and we already know that the relationship of MPV MW is load factor we have already said that in equation 1 is it not. So, load factor is a product of shape factor multiplied by I put this as factor of safety. Why I call this factor of safety? Because any fraction which is applied on the yield strength to arrive at the allowable stress is always factor of safety. Okay. Now, let us take a quick example and see what is happening actually in the plastic design. Let us say I am analyzing a section for axial tensile strength. I am having a bar, I am trying to pull the bar, I am analyzing the section for axial tensile strength. In axial tension, the permissible or I can say allowable, allowable stress is 0.6 sigma y. Let I am saying let because it depends upon the code, depends upon the method of design. Let us say 0.6 f1 or sigma y. So, therefore, sigma y by sigma allowable will be sigma y by 0 0.6 sigma y which will be 1.66 this what we say as factor of safety okay, in working stress design. Or elastic design why elastic design? Because here the stress levels are limited till the proportional limit of the material. Okay. So, working stress design principle has an explicit factor of safety which is seen in the calculation which is nothing but the ratio of the yield value to the allowable stress value for a specific application. This changes if it is talking about bending strength it will be 0.66 fy talks about shear it is about 0.4 fy keeps on changing this fraction keeps on changing, but I have picked up an example of an axial tension which is 0.6 fy or sigma. So, people were happy in the working stress design method because explicitly the factor of safety is seen in the design calculation. I am trying to show what is the effect of this on plastic design. Now, let us apply this plastic design. Let us take a rectangular section. for which the shape factor is 1.5 we have derived yesterday. So, you will see that the load factor which is 1.5 times of 1.66 which is about 1.85 I think you please check this. How much is this? 2.4. Okay. And Q is nothing but what is the value of Q? This M P by M W is it not? So, Q admits for margin of safety. which accounts for a value phenomenally higher than the conventional factor of safety in working stress design. Okay. So, plastic design procedure has 
गुड मार्जिन ऑफ सेफ्टी विच इज रिफ्लेक्टेड थ्रू दी लोड फैक्टर ओके थ्रू द लोड फैक्टर क्यू ओके सो द क्वेश्चन विच वॉज बॉदरिंग एस एज ए डिजाइनर वेदर plastic design mechanic principle has in a factor of safety comparison to working this design is eliminated because it is having in a factor of safety as margin of safety which is seen in the load factor which is nothing but the ratio of moment to plastic moment to working moment or elastic moment okay where elastic moment is the moment what you get using elastic design plastic moment is the moment carrying capacity what you arrive using the plastic design the difference between these two is q and that q accounts for margin of safety multiple shape factor now let us quickly see what is the effect of shape factor in terms of this ratio let us try to look at a plot i am plotting this as m by m y and epsilon by epsilon y okay 1 2 3 4 5 6 and of course this is 1 m and m y are equal then this is 2 and so on so the grid starts from here is linear till here is linear till here about this point then keeps on changing for different shape factors this is solid circular 1.7 rectangular one point five tubes one point two seven and box sections one point one two five and of course i sections it varies from 1.1 to 1.18 there are horizontal lines okay there is no dipping these are horizontal so you can see from here there is no section which is chosen for marine structure design who shape factor is less than 1 okay so always the load factor will be higher than the conventional factor of safety what people have in mind for working stress design so plastic design is a safe procedure okay there is no doubt you can select any section like this conventionally i will just finish in few minutes then we'll take up the next lecture conventionally if you really wanted to find the shape factor which is nothing but zp by ze ze is not a problem you can easily find for a given section but zp is a problem because zp conventionally is a by 2 of y bar 1 plus y bar 2 so ultimately if you want really find zp do not try to look for this equation it is nothing but the first moment of the area about equal area axis so for a given section locate the equal area axis locate upper and lower parts locate the cgs of that y bar 1 y bar 2 take the moment of the upper part and the lower part separately independently with respect to the equal area axis 
mechanically is how you will find the z p. Once you know z p for a given section you know z you can find z. Okay? Try to understand this very clearly. Otherwise, shape factors directly available in equation forms in standard literature and in codal provisions for different sections which are conventionally used for marine structures. We need not derive them at all, but we should know how we have obtained it. Okay? So, in this lecture we discussed about two aspects important, one is what we call curvature ductility how to arrive at the curvature ductility and we have seen the relationship between m p and m in terms of ductility in terms of elastic core depth. Okay. Then we went down to explain that how the margin of safety is inherently available in the plastic design procedure because yes shape factor is nowhere less than 1 for any section. It means that my margin of safety is always higher than the conventional so called factor of safety what people follow in working stress design. Is that clear? So, in the next lecture we will talk about how we will arrive the collapse loads for different system using two interesting theorems what we call static theorem and kinematic theorem respectively we will see in the next lecture.